is my homemade Nerf Blaster version 3.5. It is the same blaster that was in the version 3 video, but I have since modified it and added a few extra features. The aim of this project was to try to make a compact, spring-powered, magazine-fed homemade with reasonable performance. The basic concept is the reverse-inverse bullpup design, but with a magazine loading system added. There is also a large 3D printed shell which encases the mechanism and makes it look like a real blaster. Most of the parts were printed in ABS plastic as it is very strong and easy to sand. The main shell is made of 14 different pieces which were glued together with solvent weld. I then spent many hours sanding the surface before applying a thick coat of lacquer to make sure the surface was smooth and shiny. The magazine well is the same version that was in my previous video, but is now printed in blue to match the blaster better. The plunger tube I'm using is 50mm polycarbonate tube with a 3mm wall thickness. It acts as the backbone for the whole blaster and is very strong, but also very heavy. The final blaster mass is 1.5 kilograms. The plunger head uses a floating o-ring which stops vacuum loading and has very little friction inside the plunger tube. The plunger rod is made from 10mm diameter acetal and uses an omnidirectional catch meaning it can rotate and still work correctly. In the stock piece there are two PVC elbow joints which direct the compressed air into the barrel. This white piece contains an o-ring which seals against the barrel as it moves backwards. The barrel is 16mm PVC pipe and is about 30cm long. You can use a two-stage barrel with some wider copper pipe on the end, but I found this doesn't increase the performance much. In the future, I may exchange the barrel for something which is more optimised and slightly longer, but this works for now. Attached to the bottom of the barrel is a rack. This engages with the pinion gear and moves the barrel backwards and forwards. Originally, I used an 8 toothed Lego gear but stresses caused it to deform so much that it would slip, so I replaced it with a 3D printed one. The priming rack is reinforced with a steel bicycle spoke to prevent it from snapping. The priming adapter has three Picatinny rails and allow a foregrip of any kind to be attached. I am using an angled foregrip, but I also have a vertical foregrip which can be used instead. Because this gun is quite powerful, I added a safety switch. It is a button which can be pushed from either side to lock or unlock the trigger, similar to how a drill safety switch works. There is a hole in the trigger arm which the safety switch slides through. When in the unlocked position, there is a slot cut which allows the trigger to move. When locked, it obstructs the trigger travel. A tiny nub on the switch gives the clicking sound as you move it. As a fun extra feature, there are blue LEDs which shine through the polycarbonate. Due to the lack of space, I used LED strips which are very thin and reduce the amount of soldering needed. They are activated by the small switch and are powered by a 9 volt battery inside the grip. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.